sit. We have them sit at every doorway, especially the front door is a big, important doorway. He sits, you step in to accentuate the fact that this is your boundary. There's a bunch of dogs in here getting house trained during the day, uh, prey trained. So it's a good place to do this because it's a big distraction, but he has to stay calm, stay in a sit stay, wait till I come back to get him and then walk through with me. Okay, he walks through with me. If he tries to pull me through this doorway, I just tap and release, tap and release. And you see how he goes really slowly through this. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna close the door first. Have him sit. And I'm gonna open the door. It's much harder for them to stay in a sit stay if you have them sit first and then open the door because the door could always trigger them to pop up. You may not be able to see him, so I'm gonna Okay, sit, have him sit really close to the threshold so you can see him. He's waiting, I step out, he waits there, never coming out after you. This is, this is what makes this such a valuable exercise. He waits till you come back next to him. The message to him is he only goes through boundaries with you. If this door is open and you step out, he waits until you come back to get him. He doesn't follow you, so don't call him to come to you because you'll destroy your sit stay and then he'll just chase you out of out you know through any gateway or doorway so the message is he waits he only goes through these boundaries with you so he waits till you come back you say okay and then since I'm alone I have to do a little left turn close this door sit and now we're gonna go out through the gates and at the curb and start our walk and we'll show you that sit so we're coming out of the gate now to go out onto the street to take our walk he's sitting Hopefully you can see him, he's waiting. This is always a tough boundary because this is the boundary that leads out into public and he's very excited. No, see he kind of like got up and crawled, so that's a mistake, I'm putting him back. Also we have the camera person here which is always an added distraction, we don't usually have that. Now he's waiting till I say okay and he's gonna walk through with me, kind of pulling a little bit so I'm tapping him and see how I'm really walking through slowly, he's not pulling. I did this with him every day for quite a while and every day he got a little bit better, pulled a little bit less and now you can see he's quite calm when he comes through here. So you have to continue doing this or else he could easily just go back to pulling you through everywhere like he used to. So once we're out here, it's sit and there's a car blocking this curb right now so just film me, I'm going to let him go, be free, we're going to go to this curb and I'll show you the curb, little curb thing we do. So if you start the walk like this, where there's all these places where he has to sit and be calm and wait, and sit and be calm and wait, your walk is just so much easier because you start off on your terms, you don't start off where he's just pulling you through, sit, racing out the doorway, and then you try to do training once you're out here, it's kind of too late, he's already in crazy mode. But if you start the way we start, on the inside of the front door with the door closed and all the way out, and then also do this curb thing. See how I had him sit? I'm doing a, just a regular sit stay at the curb. And then we're gonna cross the street. We're gonna go over there, but keep filming us. Okay. And I always treat the street from, the, from curb to curb as training mode, like across the street. I would walk a little bit faster, but this is a very quiet street. But the street is the structured area and each curb is where it ends when you get to the other side. So. We're on the other side here. I'm walking super slow. Sit. He's very interested in the camera guy. Wondering why he's shadowing us, probably. So we had the doorway, the gateways, the curb. Over here in walking on leash mode. A sit. And now the walk starts. Go. And we get to start, even though he's very excitable, very excitable dog, we get to start with a much calmer Toby. Uh, other, rather than having him pull us through all the doorways and gateways and across the street and just being out of control at that point. So if you start the walk like this every day, he starts to anticipate what happened yesterday and last week and you do this the same way every time and you'll see over time your walks are calmer, he gets calmer in general. This is a big part of the training, the boundary training. So it's, it's easy to do, anybody can do it, you just have to keep doing it the way you see us doing it here. And, and he'll just get better and better over time. Okay. Sit. 
We're gonna practice our little sit stay here in the middle of lots of activity. It's not the first time that he's been to this store. Of course, this is not easy. We practiced here a lot, and he's gotten really, really good. If he does a sit stay in this kind of situation, good. See how I did it? I rewarded him. Put the treat by my my face. I came back, stood next to him, put the treat up there. He's looking at me right in the eyes, and then good, straight down. He gets rewarded. He's looking you in the eyes as he gets the reward. That's the way to reward him. With the sit now, he does it all day long at every boundary, and he does it a lot. So I don't reward him unless he does a phenomenal sit stay. It's all about the stay, of course. So when he's staying in a situation like this, like all the things that you saw just happen before I went back next to him, he deserves a little reward because this is not easy. So when he, when you are ready to release him, there's two ways to release him. You either pat his chest with your right hand like this and say go and that means that he's free and off the clock and he has some free time now or if you want to continue training and you still want him to be in work mode on the clock however you want to put it and he's sitting sit usually it would be to walk to go somewhere so you pat your leg and you say okay Right? Okay. When you're walking with him, if you want to really work on his pulling, okay. You you hold the leash like this coming out the back of your hand. You okay. Tie your leg and walk and tap and turn. This left hand turn is really important. Tap and turn. See I'm always turning into him and see how he's not pulling? And after a while, you don't really even have to tap that much. Sit. But if you want to uh, make his leash walking easier and easier for you, where there's less and less pulling, just do this little exercise. I'm going to go there and then go this way. Okay. You can, you can do it in your driveway. You can do it on the sidewalk, on a walk, wherever you want to do it. Just okay. Walk about 10 feet or so. Do a full left turn. At the end of that turn, sit. Okay, another 10 feet, whatever. Left turn, see how, sit. See how when you turn left, the dog is drawn back next to you. There's no pulling, sit at the end of it. Say so you could do that six or seven or eight times in one minute, pretty easily. The last time you step away, finish it off with a little sit stay like this. Walk around both ways. Go back next to him with your treat. So the treat happens at the end now. Eye contact, straight down, good. And then, I would normally do it on my walk. So I do this on the sidewalk. And then, pat his chest, go. And he's free and give him, give him some free time on, on the walk until you come to the next curb or whatever and have him sit again. Call him to come to you, have him sit. That's a great exercise for uh, teaching him to calmly walk next to you and, and not pull. Down. You know, we're practicing this down stay with uh, a lot of things going on around here, lots of things going past. Lots of wheels, big uh, things moving past us. We have uh, the Amtrak, which is right there. It goes by every every three to five minutes. This is really hard for him to stay down with all this noise. Good. So I'm going to reward him for staying there. That's really that's really a tough one. Super noisy. Um, you may have seen that when I said D O W N that I at the, the same moment I said that I did this at the same moment I said down. Because sometimes, especially in a stressful situation, he he won't just drop like we would want them to. So if you ever have an issue with him not going down when you say it the first time, don't ever repeat it. And for a while, maybe just do the down like that. 
and the, he's, the stay is solid, so once he's there, it's solid. Of course, we're shooting for him, and every dog we change the drop, and sometimes it takes a while to get to that point, depending on the dog. So just do it that way. Don't say it, wait for him to hesitate or ignore you, and then force him down. You'll get stuck in that pattern forever. It'll never change, but if you do the action down at the same moment you say the word, later on, and it could just be a couple of days, because he's almost there now. Uh, he, he'll just do it without, the, without your foot. So there's no bending over, you don't have to point, you don't have to snap your fingers, it's just down like that. But, this, but the stay is real good. Obviously we don't say stay. Uh, if I do something like pull on his leash, it's very good, gets a reward for that, good. Or you saw me walking around him, anything like that, he'll stay there. There's cars coming really close to us here. You can see that, right? Good. He's developed a pretty solid downstay. And of course, we're after the byproduct of them being able to do these downstays and, and sit stays. Um, uh, and that byproduct is when he's on free time. Every day we practice this, every week we practice this, he's a little bit calmer, 24-7. Just, just, it just stabilizes him overall to be able to do this. See how I'm rewarding him? Good. Just like as if we're on the mat, you put the, the reward neck in front of him, he waits until you withdraw, he takes it off the ground, not touching your hand, just like in the mat exercise. One more time. Good. Good. We're, we're actually you? filming this here. Uh, you. Okay. Yeah, we're doing a training, we're doing a training Sorry. video. Sorry. That's okay. That was good. Somebody walked up, started talking to me and he stayed there. He's doing very well. You see he's panting, that means he's overstimulated, but he, he's doing, and he knows he's supposed to stay there until he's released. So the way that we release him is we stand next to him, we say, okay, sit, always release him out of a down, like that, okay, and then have him sit because we can reinforce this calm sit stay by patting his chest and saying, go and we want to really make sure that we release him calmly because uh, every time that we release him calmly like that he's, he keeps more of that calmness in him that we're trying to develop in the stay always always go really slowly there and and uh, carefully and release him calmly and uh, he'll, he'll continue to, to uh, be more and more calm as time goes on When I'm practicing the recall, the come command, I always do it the same way. Left hand leash, this loop is over my hand. Right hand reward, call him to a closed hand because in an emergency, you're not gonna have a leash or a treat and you're just gonna be, you're gonna call him to this and he's not gonna know it's empty, so always call him to this. Come! So see how I called him away from that guy? Good. His nose touches that target hand, it opens, he gets to treat. My left hand is free because the loop is over my wrist and my left hand grabs the leash and so I have him. And then I could step into him, sit, or I could just walk or whatever. But always grab the leash with your left hand because you never want him to n realize that he can grab the treat and run off again. Go. If he doesn't have a leash on, let's see, He's, let's say that he's gotten out on the street or something and he runs back to you. Come. Your hand grabs his collar. His collar, the collar with the tags on it. Because he's probably going to, he always wears that. You never take the collar with the tags off. Just make sure that the left hand always grabs the collar or leash. The right hand is for the treat. And he's going to get, he already is very used to you having, you know, being in control and either taking his leash or his collar. And that's really important, of course. Um, also, make sure you back away, like you saw me every time. Come, always back away, good. Because when you back away, he's drawn to race to you, to run to you. And because we practice that way, now you can have your back to a wall or, or a curb or something and he'll still race to you because that's the way you practice. He doesn't know why he wants to run to you. He just does every time. And always when you're practicing, practice calling. Don't call him when he's staring at you. Call him away from something. Like see how he's looking that way? Wait till he looks away from me again. He's 
making all these noises here. Come. Good. Always practice calling him away from something because that's a real life situation. So you practice in a way when you have the leash and the reward that always works when there's an emergency and you don't have either in real life. Okay. Sit. You always walk Toby up to the person, have him sit, step over to the person, give him a little treat for him to accept. He waits till I come back next to him. With my right hand, I'm going to pat his chest and say, go say hi. You're going to take the treat. Come. So he's done this so many times. He goes and grabs the treat from the person instead of jumping on them, which is our goal, and he comes running back to me. So he's very fast. He's learned this very well. He didn't take the treat. Did you go like this? Make sure you show it to him. We're gonna do it again. Go say hi. Did you take it? Yes. Okay, come. So he'll have to at least hold on to his collar or else he'll run right back to me. Sit. It's a great exercise to do with family members, friends, whoever comes over, strangers of course. Um, once you've practiced it a little bit with him and he's used to doing it with you, then you can start adding more things like the little walk around sit stay like that and then the person already has a treat. Make sure you always wait. See how he's really waiting for me to pat his chest and say go and then come. Good. So you get to practice the sit stay, sit. You get to practice the recall, the go command, the going over and do it one more time. Not jumping on the person. If the treat's down there and the, hand, and the person's hands are down there to meet him, there's no reason for him to jump. All the good stuff is down on ground level. And if he does jump, you have your recall, which calls him right back, or the person can do go. Come. I'll finish that sentence right now. Sit. The person, uh, if it's a family member or friend that's helped you before, it will teach them to just say no and the hands go away. There's no correcting when he jumps. If you push him down, you hold him down, you say his name, you say off, down, stop, no, whatever, and go like this. He's gonna love that, he'll think you're playing a game, and it'll get worse, so if he does try to jump on you, your hands immediately go up and you step away and let him jump to his heart's content. He's gonna stop, look up at you, and then you're gonna, good, pet him like that. So correcting the jumping only perpetuates it, especially with him. So, uh, but when he's jumping on somebody new, obviously they're not gonna do the hands up in the air thing because they don't know how to do that. Just use your recall, he's got a great recall. He'll come right back to you. We're gonna walk him up to the mat. We're gonna have him sit and wait. The leash is always loose. If he tries to jump on there, run on there, because he loves his mat, you're just gonna tap him and release. It's tap and release. It's not restraining. If you restrain him and you have tension on the leash, it'll cause overstimulation in Toby and make him uh, break out of his sit stay and that's where all bad things come from this continuous tight leash so you're always tapping if you tap it like that tap and release he'll go back to his sit stay if he does jump the gun and try to go before you release him but he's waiting there with your right hand you're gonna pat his chest and say go to your mat walk over with him and say down <clears throat> and then I usually do this exercise for about five minutes and I'll time it good and the goal is that he is released out of this exercise every day a little bit calmer. He is a very hyper dog, and that's who he is naturally, being a poodle. But we can make him a lot calmer. And over time, if you keep doing this, you'll see he'll, he's gonna get calmer over time because he really has to focus. He re really has to think and stay there on the mat no matter what you do, good, where you go, the delivery of the reward is super important because if you're tossing the food down, if you're moving fast, if you're, you're practicing with jerky movements and um, you know, he's, or he's grabbing the food out of your hand or touching your hand, that means he's not calm and the whole idea of this exercise is that he come out of this exercise, this downstay, 
in a calmer state than when he went into it every day, just a little bit calmer. So this reward process, the way that you reward him is really important. See how I'm kind of swinging in like this? No. Pull back and say no if he tries to take it. No. Good. He needs to wait until you start to withdraw and then take it off the mat. And if you pause there for a couple of seconds, that's really good because he has to pause with you and really wait until you withdraw. That's called focus and concentration. And we want to build that up in him as time goes on so that it gets stronger and stronger in him. Good, it's, it's, a, it's a calming exercise. So that's just a basic downstay and whatever you do on the mat, whatever you practice with him on the mat, he'll be able to do without the mat over time. And he, as you'll see in the other clips, he can do this without the mat in real life because from day one we practice this mat exercise. It gives him a great downstay anywhere over time. Um, and I was just practicing that walk around downstay. Now I'm going to drop the leash and do bigger circles, go farther away. Walk over here behind him. If he pops up, he makes a mistake, you say no. Okay. And just reset him. And he probably will put himself back usually. If he doesn't, you just do this with your left foot. I didn't even touch the leash. You just saw my foot go up and he went back. So if you're doing something that is difficult for him to handle, then it's okay to remind him what to keep doing. Down. Go back here again where I went before. He stayed there this time. Gonna go back. Always reward him the same way from the same place in front, exactly the way you see me doing it here. Make sure he's calm. No. Make sure he really waits. Good. Now I'm gonna go over here, so that means you shift this way so these things aren't in the way. If he gets up and comes your way, you say no. So we're putting him back. Let's try this again. Obviously me going over to that gate is difficult for him to handle, so we're gonna show you how to get past the problem. So that triggers him to go over to that gate. So if you're ever gonna, if you're ever working on something that's, that's difficult for him to stay in a downstay when you do it, it's okay to remind him what to keep doing. So I'm gonna say down. We've had to reset him a few times because he keeps popping up as I walk across the yard towards the gate. So let's see if he can handle this now. Down. Good, so he's, he stayed that time. I think I had to reset him three times. And he gets an extra big, no. Make sure he really waits. Ex no. Extra big reward here. Good. Make sure he really waits. You see how hyper he is. He gets very excited and he's very jumpy, but we can make this better and he can learn new things. So we're going to try an extra step now. Down. And I'm going to open this gate because this will probably trigger him to open this gate. Good. So we'll reward him for that. The reason this is such a big trigger, good, is because when he's free in this yard, we come and go through that gate. So he's used to running up to us when we, when we leave and running up to us when we come in. No. So if he tries to climb off the, the mat like that, to crawl off the mat, you, just step, you say no and you step into him. Use your body, you don't even have to touch the leash. So let's try doing a little bit more. Down. Opening the gate. Stepping out. Closing the gate behind me. That's a tough one for him, but he got it. So we started out where I couldn't even walk away from him without him racing after me. Had to reset him a few times. Good. Did some extra things that surely would have triggered him and he stayed because he got it. Like he's done this so many times, he gets it. When you start practicing a new problem with him and he gets it in his mind, oh, I'm supposed to stay down when you do that too. It's kind of added to the list of all the other things you've done. Like at first, I couldn't walk around him both ways because he'd pop up. Then he got that and then he got that I was going to like maybe pull on the leash 
like that, which he won't get up now. He used to get up. Most dogs would. Good, when you pull on the leash, most dogs come towards you. So every little time, every time that you have a little issue where he makes a mistake or two with something you're doing, you just keep on resetting him. If, if it's, um, see I'm stepping into him because he's starting to crawl off the mat. If it's too hard for him to handle, maybe just do a portion of what you're doing. Only walk halfway there or close the door halfway and then reward and each time go a little bit farther and reward. Try to get a success and then work back up to the whole, the whole cycle, the whole process of what you're doing uh, and that's how you get a success. Maybe something you're trying is too hard for him to handle. So break it into parts and do the first part, go back reward, do the first and second, go back reward. Find out what place he starts making mistakes and try to work back up to that gradually. And that's what I've done and that's, that's the way it works really well. Now we're gonna release him. So we're gonna walk back next to him. This is the way you release him. He stays in a down while you, no. He stays in a down. You go and stand back next to him. He's on your left. You say, okay. He's gonna come off the mat. You say, sit. And then in this case, we're just gonna take a little walk. Okay. Okay. Sit. You always walk him up to the crate, have him sit. Open the door. No, see how he wants to run in? Make sure that you know, that's just like the other in the other clip. If he breaks out of the sit stay before you release him, just tap and say no. And then he's waiting to be sent in there. This door is closing by itself, so this is a little bit awkward. Go. I'm even tossing some treats in to make sure that he knows to go in there. Um, he's never gone in and out of the crate in the yard before, and this is the way we do it with most of the dogs because it's easy to film it out here. Uh, harder in the bedroom where the crates are. So um, if he's never gone in a crate out here, he's going to be more hesitant to go in and out of a crate where that crate doesn't belong, where he's never, you know, his location of his crate has never been here. So he did pretty well, of course, because he loves his crate. Most of the dogs do. We feed them in there. He gets his meals in there. Um, he sleeps overnight in the crate. He's in and out of the crate all day long. Um, and he always comes, he goes in like that every day. There's somebody, it's not just me, but there's several other people taking him through the house, sitting at doorways, sitting in front of the crate, being allowed to go in. He gets a treat, he goes in, he gets a treat. We take off his little uh, collars, his equipment. And then you hang the prong collar on the door like this so it doesn't get tangled up in itself. The leash and the uh, choke chain can go wherever you want. The choke chain's only for safety. You never use this for training because it could really damage his throat because there's no safety on it and it just goes like this. It could really choke him. So this is hanging on loosely, but the leash is attached to the prong collar as well as the choke chain so that if the prong collar ever comes off, because it's a very small prong collar that we use, if it ever comes off, you don't lose the dog. So this is just for safety, not for training. Uh, the prong collar might look scary, but uh, it's not. It doesn't hurt the dogs, as you can see throughout all the videos. Um, we're only tapping, tapping and releasing. There's no, actually no corrections. I've never corrected him, so, um, you know, so it's certainly not harshly at all. Uh, so the prong collar closes with the same pressure on the back of the neck as well as the front. So it makes it very easy to tap and release, tap and release and slow him down or walk into him or uh, whatever you're doing. It's so much easier than a regular collar that would be just kind of choking him here. And um, if you use this properly, it really helps with your overall training. It, it's like power steering on your dog. So I use these little tiny prong collars. It really helps. Uh, not with all the dogs, but he certainly um, benefits from it. And I think it'll make it easier for you as well. So uh, let's say that he's been in there for a while. Uh, like I said, he eats in there, give him his bones and chewies in there, anything he likes, everything good happens in the crate. Do dogs, <laughs> excuse me, dogs are natu naturally den animals. So this, he's naturally gonna be uh, interested in cozying up in a cozy place like that. Now we make it the most awesome place ever. He gets fed in there, you bring his bowl of food, you open the door, give, give it to him, close the door. The door is always closed. It's closed when he's in and it's closed when he's out. You, the power of the crate 
is that you control his boundary. You control this boundary and you control his access in and out of his den. We develop it as his den. In his mind, every interaction with you is super positive when it comes to the crate. So if I'm gonna take him out now to go on a walk, I'm gonna start with just putting this this uh, choke chain on, the safety on, so that we have a doubled up um, collars, two collars when we take them in public so it's safe. And I'll just put my hand through it. He'll take the treat. I'll just slide over his head very easily. And that's on. And then we attach the leash to the prong collar. And make sure that you, close this for a second while I show you, make sure that you always attach the leash to the funny shape buckle. This little round spacer is uh, strictly that, it's just a spacer, you don't touch it. Make sure that it's not twisted, that it goes like this, and it's attached to the leash already. You just reach in, and it's quite easy to just do by feel, attach it, and then you clip the leash, the clip on the leash to the choke chain so that both collars are attached to the leash. And now you're ready to go, but he's still gonna wait. He still has to wait to come out for your permission. So when I open that door, he's gonna wait. If he doesn't wait, you just do this, no. Do these little token slams. See how I'm kind of bouncing it? And say, no, he'll wait. He's obviously pretty good at this. Just pat your leg and say, okay, and he'll come out. And always make sure you close this door because if you leave the door open and he just goes in and out at will, you're squandering your, your power of the crate, which is to control his access in and out. It's all about boundaries, as you see with the gateways and the curbs and the doorways and all that. If you, if you control the boundaries, the dog starts to perceive you as the boss. So that's why that's so important. But that's, that's our crate routine.